what I do. Local music lovers remember a blues legend. The first name that pops in anybody's head most of the time when you think of the blues is B.B. King. Then, a tough subject tackled in a new documentary. A look at the relationship between Africans and African Americans. But first, Brooklyn Center celebrates a business revival. 12 News starts right now. <clears throat> Hello and thanks for joining us. A business revitalization is taking place in Brooklyn Center. After years of seeing stores close or relocate, city officials say that now the opposite is true. And as Delane Cleveland reports, even more businesses are on the way. When Brookdale went down, it was like part of history gone. The Brookdale Mall was once considered a prime shopping destination. Kenny's was down there, Bachman's, Donaldson's. There was numerous stores that were very, very busy. Carol Gonzalo worked at the Brookdale Dayton's in the late 80s during a more prosperous time. I have great memories working for Dayton's. But after a steady decline, Dayton's and the rest of the mall were demolished. Out of Brookdale's rubble came a brand new wave of development on what is now called Shingle Creek Crossing. It's been about two years since Walmart opened to essentially become the anchor tenant of Shingle Creek Crossing. And in that time span, plenty of other businesses have followed suit. That's what brought Carol back to Brooklyn Center today. I came out here to visit TJ Maxx. I'm a TJ Maxx Denista. TJ Maxx celebrated its grand opening Thursday night and right next door. And so this weekend is really, really big for graduation. Michael's Arts and Crafts also opened its brand new store after relocating from Crystal. This was an up and coming area. Um, it's right on Highway 100. It's a good location. And as you can see, it's grown a lot here and Michaels was happy to jump in and be part of the new community. For Brooklyn Center City officials. Shingle Creek Crossing is a uh, phased development process. The first store opened in 2012. Their grand vision for revitalizing the area is becoming a reality and will continue through next year. It's been very, very busy and productive, but the improvements that we're seeing are just outstanding and uh, we're, we're going to see more moving forward as well. Which is good news for people who had emotional attachments to Brookdale. See the Brookdale back? It's great. In Brooklyn Center, Delaney Cleveland, 12 News. A grand opening celebration for Michaels will take place on Sunday morning. It begins at 9.45 with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. A family fun center and a pet boarding facility are the latest projects proposed for a hot development area of Brooklyn Park. The Planning Commission this week reviewed a proposal for five buildings. It would include a Grand Slam fun center, which features batting cages, mini golf and bumper cars, as well as a Stone Mountain Pet Lodge. A restaurant could also be part of the project. A Golden Valley man is accused of leading a multi-million dollar smartphone scheme that involved using homeless people to buy phones with stolen identities. Prosecutors say 30-year-old Zaibo Lee resold smartphones in Hong Kong, which can go for much higher prices th uh, there than here in the U.S. Lee is among nine people indicted. Several law enforcement agencies were involved in the investigation, including Plymouth Police. At Wyzetta High School, there is an effort to get young drivers focused on the road. We definitely want you to get to where you're going to go and to have fun, but we want you to do it in a very safe manner. That is the voice of Plymouth firefighter Jamel Anderson, who helped the school's video class produce a safety announcement about distracted driving. It comes as students prepare for prom and graduation. I think it's a problem in every school just because people are so, they, it's something about our culture where people are so, they just almost need their phones at all times and make sure that everything's okay. Police say more than one-fourth of all accidents can be blamed on distracted driving. The performing arts took center stage in Maple Grove. That's the North Ballet at the Pop of Color Arts Gala. The performance was part of a fundraiser for the Maple Grove Arts Center. Right now, the Arts Center uses a small donated space along Main Street, but it's beginning the push for a fine arts and performance center. We need to have something on a larger scale that allows the public to come in and be able to view you know, the, the performance arts along with theater and acting and singing and dancing and musicians and everything. The artists at the gala all donated their time to raise money for the new facility. 
And local music fans are reacting to the loss of blues legend B.B. King. The guitarist died Thursday in Las Vegas. Sonia Goen shows us how he's being remembered. The thrill is gone. The thrill is gone, but B.B. King's legacy will forever live on in the hearts of musicians and fans who loved his music. It's another icon gone. The thrill is gone. King's music was piping through the sound system at Down in the Valley store in Golden Valley. When you hear B.B. King, you know it's him. He had that style, that sound that uh, was so unique, and I think that's why he lasted as well. B.B. King was born in Mississippi. He sang in church choirs and learned to play guitar from an uncle. The B.B. stood for Blues Boy, a name he took on early in his career. His masterful style of playing crossed over ethnic and racial lines. I grew up on blues musicians, and of course, when you the first name that pops in anybody's head most of the time when you think of the blues is B.B. King. King's voice was just as famous as his beloved guitar, Lucille. He owned quite a number of them and named them all Lucille. This is not a genuine Lucille, but it's pretty close. B.B. actually played a bottle called the Gibson ES355, and this lacks one knob that his Lucilles would have had. The blues great had a way of making his guitar talk. A lot of it, too, was his technique. If you watch him play, he could take his index finger and play a single note with a vibrato and make the guitar speak. King once said he wanted to connect his guitar to human emotions. I think many would agree he did that. He was so incredibly express expressive and still minimal. Um, he could turn a phrase into a feeling. He wasn't a very, you know, complicated guitar player. He was just there was a lot of soul and a lot of power in the little notes that he played, and that's what I loved about him the most. Sweet 16. In Golden Valley, Sonia Goins, 12 News. When I first met you, B.B. King was 89 years old. Coming up, a Brooklyn Park production company's new film on a topic seldom discussed, how Africans and African Americans view each other. Then later in sports, hear from the new boys basketball coach at Park Center High School. But first, an unsettled forecast. The chance for storms increased late Saturday and then again on Sunday. A new documentary takes a closer look at the complex relationship between Africans and African Americans. Local production company had a big role in making the film, and reporter Shannon Slatton shows us what producers hope it accomplishes. A long time ago, in the land of warm waters. A new documentary hopes to shed light on a tension that exists between Africans and African Americans. I was called African booty scratcher I don't know how many times. I'm not even sure what an African booty scratcher is. I don't know if it's a stick you scratch your back with. I have no idea. The film is called Bound, Africans versus African Americans. When I came to the United States, it really was important to me to connect with African Americans, but then uh, arriving and getting that phrase, you people sold us, was in direct conflict with what I thought I was going to receive. Producer Perez Aguino used her own experiences to begin writing the film. It just started off really, really small. You know, we had no idea how big it was going to get. But we did understand that this was a conversation that people were having in private. The idea caught the attention of Hollywood actor Isaiah Washington, who linked Perez up with a production company in Brooklyn Park, a company that had already tackled the subject in a 2013 film called Boys Cry. What's up, Africa? We need to start speaking about it. We're not going to solve any problem, but we are going to raise the dialogue and saying that these are things that are going on in our community, how do we fix that? Bound has gained traction and accolades in film festivals, and producers hope it's a starting point for many conversations. It's telling me that this is a conversation that people want to have, and not just Africans and African Americans, but humanity is trying to bridge, is trying to build these bridges, and so hopefully, Bound is like starts at all in that conversation. In Brooklyn Park, Shannon Slatten, 12 News. You can attend a screening and discussion this Saturday at the Cedar Cultural Center in Minneapolis. The event starts at 7 p.m. Well, coming up, we have the scoop on local theater performances around town this weekend. But first, more on the grand reopening of Brooklyn Park's Edinburgh Golf Course. John Jacobson is in next. One of the area's top golf courses received a major facelift in 2014 
And Thursday's rain softened up the greens for golfers. Some 28 years after opening for golf, Edinburgh, USA and Brooklyn Park held a grand reopening today. Nearly $2 million in renovations have been done here, changing and taking out some bunkers and redoing some of the greens. The goal was to make the course a little more playable and more forgiving to the weekend golfer. The Robert Trent Jones II design course first opened in 1987. A new head boys basketball coach has been named at Park Center High School. Former Hopkins assistant James Ware is the Pirates' new leader. Ware is getting to know some prospective players at open gyms at Park Center. Ware starred at Hopkins and played collegiately at Colorado State and Texas Tech. He's worked as an assistant in several Division I programs, and most recently he's been back at Hopkins as an assistant principal at the junior high level and as an assistant to Royals coach Ken Novak, Jr. He also lives in the Park Center area. Well, I know this area, I know this community. Community's passionate about basketball. I'm passionate about basketball. It's been pretty much, you know, my life's journey, quite honestly. Um, you know, I got kids in the program, so um, I'm excited. I'm excited just because, you know, we opened the gym uh, last week for kids to start getting in. And, and as you can see behind me, you know, the kids are here. They want to play. They want to get better. And for more with James Ware, watch our interview with him on Sports Jam starting Monday on Channel 12. It airs at 3.30, 6.30, 9.30 p.m. Monday to Wednesday. After a strong regular season, the Maple Grove boys tennis team is hoping to compete for a section title. The Crimson, seen here earlier in the spring, completed the regular season with a 4-3 win over Centennial Tuesday. That improved their season's record to 17-3 with two of the losses coming to defending state champion Wyzetta. They're pretty happy with the progress the team has made. It's exceeded my expectations. Our team has really, I think, grown over the season, and we have a lot of young players on our team that have really improved over the years, um, that they played in lower teams, and they're ready, and I feel like we're really ready for sections this year. Uh, I think we had a really great regular season. We've been building all year uh, to this point. Uh, it's been a lot of mixed match and everything for doubles, so it's, it's been fun to see everybody playing together and how everybody adjusts to playing with different people each time. And we think we've got our uh, doubles partners set and singles guys are uh, peaking right at the right time, so it should be a fun tournament. The Section 5AA title has often come down to Maple Grove and Moundsview in recent seasons. Maple Grove went to the state tournament in 2012 and 2013, while Moundsview advanced last season. That potential matchup is always on the minds of Crimson players. We're always thinking about it because we're expecting to make the finals this year again. So we really do think about what lineup we're going to use and just, yeah, the best way we can. Uh, we just think about, like, what will give us the best chance to beat them. The Crimson is hosting Anoka in the Section 5AA quarterfinals Friday afternoon. A win would put them into the semifinals Saturday. There's a unique baseball team taking the field this spring. Over a dozen Armstrong and Cooper students and ball players are getting a chance to play outside of the regular high school teams. The boys of summer couldn't wait. 15 players, most of them Armstrong and Cooper high school students, got an early start to the summer traveling baseball season. These are all kids that either got cut from either Cooper or Armstrong or um, didn't go out for one reason or another. But most of these kids have played baseball all their lives. And uh, some of them are just summer baseball players. All of the players on this team have played ball growing up together in the Armstrong Cooper Youth Baseball Association. They're practicing a couple of times a week and playing a limited game schedule against high school age teams in the Metro. Playing in the spring helps these guys get ready for summer. It's nice so you don't come in rusty and bad at the plate. and. Maybe a little hard time throwing at the start. Playing better people than us or like similar to our skill level helps us get better. So well, it's been a good experience. The team started after uh, high school tryouts. A couple of us got cut. Some of us didn't want to come try out and uh, just come play baseball. There's no other option other than high school. So these kids would have been sitting around for the last two months. Instead, they've been playing now. We've been practicing. So they've gotten a lot of you know, opportunity to stay sharp, and they will be on pace with all the kids that have been playing you know, spring baseball in their high school team. So these kids are right there. The season for the ACYBA Indians and Saturday, player evaluations for the summer traveling season in Robbinsdale are scheduled for Sunday.
to one season right into the next. Already. <laughs> Thanks, John. We'll be right back. About 700 runners will roll through Robbinsdale Saturday for the second annual Bird Town Races. The half marathon and 8K go right through downtown before meandering through neighborhoods and around Crystal Lake. It brings everyone out, whether if you don't want to run, you can walk. If you don't want to walk or run, you can volunteer. If you don't want to volunteer, you can cheer. Um, the routes are in residential areas, so really trying to get the community out and get involved. The money raised from the event goes to the Heart of Robbinsdale Foundation. There are a couple of opportunities to take in local theater this weekend. Neil Persley gives us a front row preview in Weekend Showcase. Once in a house on Egypt Street. There are a couple of good Live bets if you're looking for a little theater this weekend. Based on the children's book by Kate DiCamillo, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane winds down this weekend at Stages Theater. This is an interesting tale about a China doll rabbit and his journey through life as seen through his eyes. Nathan Rowan voices the thoughts of the little toy rabbit. At the beginning, uh, he's, he's very much full of himself, like he's very pretentious and just uh, thinks he's the best thing ever. In each stage of the adventure, Edward grows in maturity. He slowly transitions from selfishness to selflessness. He gets thrown into the ocean, into a garbage dump, uh, dragged around by a dog and uh, taken around the country by some hobos. And I watched it captivate a room full of six to 12 year olds for the whole performance. It's my words, man. Over at Park Center High School, Front Porch Musical Theater is presenting the classic Fiddler on the Roof. This timeless play tackles the universal struggle of cherished cultural tradition versus culturally eroding modernism. It tells the story of the Jewish people in Russia just after the turn of the century in the 1900s. These were the waning years of the last Tsar in Russia and marked terrible persecution of Jews in what is now Ukraine and Belarus. There are many moments that are joyful and big dances, big numbers, lots of great costumes. You'll hear classic songs like Sunrise, Sunset, If I Were a Rich Man, and tradition. The biggest reason I love this show is that at the end we have hope. And I hope you'll get out and see Fiddler on the Roof Jr. For a weekend showcase, I'm Neil Persley, 12 News. Both shows are running through Sunday. We will have more information on our website at 12.tv. Love that one. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is a lot of yeah. fun. That does it for us. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend, everyone. See you Monday.